what is up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is izzy and happy to have you along today's video is going to be about how i shoot my instagram photos so if you don't follow me on instagram my handle is at izzy dilge i recently did a video on how i edit my photos so this is kind of part two of that video and i'm going to walk through how i shoot my photos and give you guys a little bit of an update on how i edit my photos because with fall and winter being like moody season i've kind of changed my editing a little bit to be a bit like darker and moodier so i'll walk you through that as well in this video so let's get started okay so i'm gonna start this video with how i shoot my instagram photos so i briefly touched on how important it is to find good lighting in my last video obviously if you can find really good lighting you barely need to edit your photos which is so key such a nice way to do it and i guess i'm just gonna start by expanding a little bit on what i meant by that so like Good lighting to me means like it hits your face nicely and most of your body pretty nicely as well. If you want to do like some kind of moody shot that has like, like say sun coming through leaves and those leaves make interesting shadows, I feel like that's kind of cool. But as long as the light hits your face nicely, that's kind of the key. It like brightens you up, doesn't create shadows weirdly on your face or cut you in half with like shadow versus sun, if that makes sense. That's kind of what I consider to be really good lighting. So. How I shoot my photos. I'm gonna break it down into like different photo types and I have weird little names for each type of photo that I like to shoot. So starting with like a full body photo. So a full body photo kind of speaks for itself. It's a photo where your whole body from head to toe is in the photo. And I personally like to take my photos, my full body pho photos from a lower angle. So whether the person that's taking the photo is squatting or just like holding the camera lower to the ground, I feel like for me, it's a more flattering angle. It makes the legs look longer um, when you're having your photo taken. So that's kind of what I like. I know it's not everybody's preference to have the lower angle, but that's kind of what I like to go for. And then if I'm doing a full body shot where I'm squatting or something like that, like obviously there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Like have somebody take it from more of an above angle, um, depending on the type of shot that you want. But when I'm taking like a squatting photo that's of my full body, I typically ask the person to like squat down to my level. So it's like nice and clean. And the other thing that I should mention, and this will go for all of the types of photos that I'm gonna talk about, but it's so important to have headroom above when the person's shooting your photo to leave space above the head because Instagram crops your photo, it crops like a little bit off the top and bottom. So it's important to leave headroom in your photos so that your head's not like right at the top. And then when you put your photo in the little grid, part of your like toes or head is missing. So I like to have like a little bit of toe room so that your toes aren't right at the bottom of the photo. And then also leave a bit of headroom as well, just for a nice, image when it goes into Instagram, it's not like super tight on the feet or super tight on the head. And now I've rambled, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay, so the next type of photo I'm gonna talk about, I call a knees up shot. So that kind of speaks for itself as well, I guess. It's like a shot where like either your shins or knees up are in the photo. So it's a closer photo than a full body shot where um, you're kind of showing off like the top half of your outfit, but the shoes are not in the photo. Again, headroom is important for this shot so that it doesn't like cut off half of your head when you have to go to crop the photo for Instagram. And for this type of shot, I typically like the camera to be about like chest height. So you can see the whole head, but it's not like you're getting an angle from like below, from like underneath the chin, because nobody really wants that. And the knees are in it. And like sometimes even if it's like all the way to the shin, so you get a bit longer shot. If you're wearing like a trench coat or like something longer and you want the whole thing to be in the shot, take it a little bit lower. I feel like that's a really flattering angle as well, but that's pretty much the gist for the knees up shot. The next type of photo I'm going to chat about is a detail shot. We just call it a detail shot because it's typically where it's from like here to like your knees and it's just kind of showing like the detail of what you're wearing and like maybe your earrings are visible in it. So it's like giving those little details, whatever jewelry you're wearing and like a close up of your outfit, usually like cut at the knee or a little bit higher and then cut the photo to about like here and then you can crop it whether you want your head completely out of it or you want your like lips and mouth in the photo whatever but um yeah i call that a detail shot so the person taking the photo will come a lot closer for that photo and they can leave in as much or little of like your head or longer on the legs as you want and then you can always just like crop it smaller for the instagram size but yeah that's a detail shot the next shot is called a headless photo. That's what I call it. These are all just my names. They're not like 
industry standards or anything, so don't take it as that. But I call it a headless shot. So it's pretty much the same angle as a full body shot. So like from a lower angle and almost your full body, like you can almost, you can pretty much shoot it as a full body shot, maybe a little bit closer, but then I like to cut it to like here. So if you have like a cool outfit that you want like a close up version of the whole thing, you can do a headless photo. It's kind of like a, a detail shot in its own way. Like it's cause it's a little bit closer up, but it's got like your whole from neck to feet in the photo, if that makes sense. In terms of who takes my photos, it's usually some of my other girlfriends that do the influencer thing. We take turns taking each other's photos so that it's not super like onerous on one person. I have a couple other girlfriends outside of the industry that are happy to take my photo every once in a while as well and I so appreciate them. They know who they are. And then obviously Chris is also such a good sport and he will take my photo when I need him to or like if we're on vacation together, he will usually take it but he is the best. He will take it if I need him, if I'm in a pinch but I try not to put that on him because I mean it's no guy's favorite thing to do by any means so if I can avoid asking him to I will but he is a good sport. Not much has changed since my previous editing video and you can refer back to that video. I will link it below in case you have missed it, but you can also just scroll down through my YouTube and find that video as well. So as I said, everything is pretty much the same, except instead of turning up the brightness slightly, I will turn it down just to give like a moodier feel. Like it's like the season for Halloween, it's darker outside. We're wearing like darker colors, like blacks and browns and like, grays whereas in the summer I feel like we wear more like pastels and like light colors so it can be kind of fun to like play around with the editing of photos as well so instead of turning it up um, like half a point or whatever I'll turn it down I, on visco I use that to darken my photos or sometimes I honestly just use the in like the photo app on my iPhone you can also just like use they have editing tools in there and sometimes I'll just use that straight away and just like turn the brightness down like quite a bit just to give like a moodier feel to some of my photos for the season because why not right for moody season what you can do is instead of editing your photos moodier you can just look for moodier shooting locations like like deep forests or like paths through trees are really good spots for cool moody lighting or like dark parkades as long as your resolution doesn't go way down i feel like those are some good spots to look for like moodier lighting so you don't even have to edit your photos darker you can just have that naturally any way that you can get it naturally for from nature is awesome but when i do shoot in like dark paths in trees or like in forests and that kind of thing i typically find that it's really easy for the light to kind of go wacky if the sky is bright and then the trees are dark. So if you tap on the sky in the photo while you're taking it, I find that that can be really helpful to like keep the light on you better. I hope I explained that well. I don't really know if I did, but hopefully you get the idea just to avoid it like overexposing the sky if it's brighter than where you're shooting you can just like tap on it and it will help brighten up the foreground so like where you are standing and the trees around you kind of thing okay i feel like i just rambled a bunch but hopefully this video has been helpful to show you guys how i shoot my photos and what kind of lighting i look for and like how i go through the shooting process for each type of shot that i'm looking for and how to edit my photos slightly differently for fall winter but as always if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment box below and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and I can try to do more of these videos in the future as I change my editing style, etc. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.